Okay, everyone, so for this day, I've got some new uh, handouts for you in the network folder that we'll talk about. So um, let's, uh, let's remind ourselves where the network folder is at. You should have a, your computer turned on. And then on the top left corner, we've got computer window. Go ahead and double click computer at the top left. And then you will see uh, network location, classroom data Z. Go ahead and open that Z drive. Z is in Zebra. And scroll down to find Campos SEO Monday. That's our class. Those are our class files in there. So go ahead and, and open Campos SEO Monday. And the things that were there from last week are still there the uh, code of conduct, the syllabus, the long tail keyword strategy, any notes that I wrote, and that drawing of the long tail keyword strategy. What's new is this company, client company profile. Go ahead and drag a copy of that. Don't just double click it. You want to drag a copy from my network folder to your desktop or flash drive if you brought a flash drive. So go ahead and copy that client company profile. Then we will look at it together. But first you want to make sure you've copied it uh, to your desktop. And the printer is off at the moment, so if you'd like to print it, you can do that a little later. But this isn't really something you would want to print, you would want to fill in, as I'll explain in a moment. So go ahead and copy that over, and we'll look at it together. And then uh, the second part of the day will be that we talk about what I mentioned previously, which is to set up our webmaster tools. This is sort of a foundational document that we need to look at and talk about together. So copy that over. If anyone's having any trouble finding that file, let me know. Okay, so I'm going to open up that document and I'm going to have some uh, little notes on the side here also that I'm going to write about and I'll put my notes in the network folder later but um, what we've got here is the company uh, profile now this is a document that my company would give to a client or work with with a client to figure out what we need to do for them regarding SEO because as I said I teach this stuff but I also do it for a living uh, I'm part of a company PMD interactive where we uh, do websites for companies, we do social media, we do SEO, photography, video, whatever they, they need for marketing. And so the question always is, well, how can someone else, how can I hire someone to do something for me if I'm the best one that knows about my company and you know the, the details of my company, how can I hire someone else to do it? Well, this is a variation on something that we do for clients, which is to develop this company profile. It's part of a larger marketing strategy. And so there aren't any grades in this class. There aren't any assignments. You don't get a certificate. This is, a, at the moment, it's a bit more of a personal development sort of class. So um, this is not an assignment that I'm giving you that you need to turn in and you'll get a grade. This is for yourself. If you would like me to look at it and give you opinions on it, I can definitely do that. But this is uh, a company profile, which I'm going to explain each of these points here. And it would be good if you can fill these in. You don't have to do it now. But at some point, if you're going to be serious about getting traffic to your website, building an online presence, making sales online, or whatever you're trying to do, it would be good if you know the most about your company and what you offer. So there's various points here that we want to answer. We've got the company name first, which seems very easy, but here I ask you to think, what is the name of your company? Why did you choose the name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be Vic.co, pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from my name. So your company name might uh, be a very kind of obvious name, Victor's Bakery. You can tell what that company is about just by the name. Or it may have a more esoteric name like Vic.co. That doesn't tell you anything about what the company really does. And that's fine. You don't have to have an obvious kind of name. If you think of the name, for example, Nike, 
Uh, hardly anyone knows that that is a that is an ancient Roman goddess about speed or war or something. No one really knows about that. It's the name of a footwear company or a lifestyle sports company, but it came from the, the goddess Nike. Nike. So uh, whatever name of your company is, it is a good idea to write a little bit here about why do you have that name. Simply writing the name of your company is okay, and if I was doing this for a grade, that would be a nice solid C to simply writing your name. Now, to get a better grade, you would have to explain, okay, why did you choose that? Is it based on your, you know, your family's name? Maybe write a little bit about where your family name comes from. Maybe you had a bunch of ideas for the name of your company and eventually settled on this one because of that. You know, why did you choose that name? Is there anything special about it? Notice here, if I hadn't explained to you the name of my company in your, in your mind's eye, how would you have pronounced the name of my company? Probably in different ways in your own mind. But here I'm saying it's pronounced Vic.co. And that's simply because that's part of the branding, that's part of the entity of my company. You don't think that these big companies of the world that are so big and famous and profitable don't have all of this written down and planned out and strategized and organized? They do. They have every aspect of their company completely planned out. And the more you think about it and do, the better. Because then, as we will see throughout this document and another document, it helps us reach your target audience. It helps us accomplish your goal, your ultimate goal. I teach way too many classes, so you'll have to remember, remind me. Did I mention this before? Ultimate conversion. Did I mention that keyword before? Okay. Did I mention the word conversion before? No. Nope. Okay. Let's back up then. Conversion. Any goal to accomplish. I think I said this. Conversion. You have customers that are not customers and eventually become customers. You have people that are not customers that eventually become customers. They were converted. That was a conversion. So a goal is, let's say, get Twitter followers. Once someone, I'm on Twitter, my company's on Twitter, and there are 320 million people on Twitter globally. Those, are not, those have not been converted yet. But let's say, uh, with some of my effort, I eventually get a few followers. Those are conversions. So the conversion, the word conversion is just the jargon for this industry about anything that is accomplished. Selling cupcakes for my cupcake company, selling cupcakes, that was a conversion. Someone did not buy the cupcake, someone did buy the cupcake. They were converted. And there are many conversion goals um, that we can have, not just selling that cupcake. I could have getting Twitter followers, getting subscribers to my newsletter, etc., etc. So a conversion is just a goal that was accomplished. The ultimate conversion is the main, the main goal you're trying to accomplish. Because if my main goal is to sell cupcakes, I have a bunch of goals before that. I need to first build a website, get traffic to it, get Twitter followers, etc., etc. We'll see in detail. But all of those mini conversions are leading to the ultimate conversion, which is to sell my products. So you have to decide whatever your ultimate conversion is. To sell a house, to get hired, to get your band hired to play a gig, to get your paintings featured in that museum, simply for people to see your paintings, to download your photos, to read your articles. Whatever your ultimate conversion is, you have to decide what that is. And everything that you're doing is in service of that. How can I sell more cupcakes? How can I get more subscribers to my newsletter? How can I get more people to read my, uh, my political rants? How can I get people to uh, you know, download my documents on financial advice. So that's your ultimate goal, whatever it is. And at the moment, you might not quite have it defined what it is. You're just, I'm a business. I, you know, I have products. So the more we define it, the better. This ultimate conversion is what we're always striving for. 
even the company name itself can be to that end. So if I've got a company called, let's say, Lumber Liquidators, well, just on its name, I sort of can tell, okay, lumber, construction, liquidators, low prices, a low-priced, you know, construction company uh, product. They, they sell something low-cost about construction. Even that name itself is leading toward the conversion to sell products because it's right in their name, liquidators, that has the connotation of low priced. So you have to figure out these details about your company name, even this basic, basic stuff. Any questions on this one? Company name. Branches. Treat them all as separate companies unless they need to be connected. Uh, for example, uh, the Coca-Cola company, uh, the only thing, that's not the only thing that they sell. They don't just sell Coca-Cola. They sell a variety of teas and a variety of sports drinks and a variety of bottled waters and vitamin waters and all of that. So it's all part of the larger Coca-Cola company, but each one almost exists and operates under its own auspices, under its own control. So depending on your uh, situation, they could operate as completely separate entities, or they could be related to each other. They could feed off of each other. So it just depends on what your particular needs are. And so if the company name is one of the most important things that defines your company, the tagline also might. Uh, so think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines or slogans. Why do they stick? Your tagline should also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. With a company like Coca-Cola um, that has been around 100 years, uh, it has a big cachet of, uh, of mind share, of what, what we think about when we think about Coca-Cola. But if you had never heard of, you know, a company like PMD Interactive, just by that name, you can't quite tell what it is. That company definitely needs a tagline. This one here, Vic.co. Okay, I don't know at all what they do. Vic.co. That's the name of the company. I don't know what they do. So if it's got a tagline of, a great company for your great website, okay, now it's becoming more clear what that company is about and what it does and what it does for me. So your tagline then, as I said here, is just a simple sentence and that should describe what your company is about. And probably for the scope of your company, you can't quite get away with yet Having these sorts of very artsy taglines, I'm loving it. What company is that? McDonald's. Uh, just do it. What company is that? Nike. I don't think we can get away with such uh, title uh, taglines like this yet. Your company, my company is not that big, so that that sort of tagline exists on its own. You're still probably going to be dealing with more matter-of-fact type of taglines that really describe what your company is here. And of course you can throw in some artistry and, and prose and such into it. But here I'm mentioning the website. Vic.co seems to be about websites. A great company for your great website. The tagline, just like all of this re regarding marketing, mo probably won't happen off the top of your head. Probably won't happen in one day or one week of brainstorming. It might take a while to figure out all of this marketing stuff because these big uh, marketing companies hire huge marketing teams and pay millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to get all of this figured out. Do you think someone suddenly thought of, I'm loving it, and then they ran with it? 
No, they had a room full of designers throwing out ideas all day long, for weeks probably, to think about what's the perfect tagline for McDonald's that will stick and, and work and sell us even more millions of hamburgers. And same thing with Nike. All of these companies spend a lot of time and effort and money to figure out every nuance of their business. For their ultimate conversion, sell more hamburgers, sell more shoes, or maybe, you know, less about capitalism, but, you know, get donations to the nonprofit, uh, build a better community with community outreach, whatever any organization is trying to do. There has to be some element of marketing because there's so much competition. So for your taglines, also known as a slogan, slogan, motto, what are other synonyms for that? Slogan, motto, tagline, there's probably other ones, but these are, this is the concept, a slogan, a tagline, a motto for your company. You will probably start off with a matter-of-fact version of it, in that it tells you matter-of-fact directly what this company is with that one sentence. Eventually, as you get bigger, more famous, as you get more customers and such, and a rebranding might be in order, that's what perhaps when you can go to the more prosaic versions of things, the more artistic versions, where you have these taglines that, honestly, you could take it away from this company and put it on another, and it doesn't matter. Just do it. That would be perfect for my tax preparation company. You don't want to get uh, an audit, do you? Do your taxes. Just do it. See? At a certain point, these these taglines with these such huge companies can almost be interchangeable. And so again, I'm not asking you to do this and turn it in. I, you can definitely write some stuff and I'll look at it and give opinions and such. Um, maybe you yourself are not the best person to do this. Maybe someone else in your company can do this. The thing that I would say is about be careful about design by committee. In, in that if everyone has the opportunity to give an opinion, they will give an opinion. And too many opinions, perhaps, too many choices, <clears throat> make it difficult to make a decision. So if everyone in the company, if you, if you ask all 10 people in the company, what do you think a good tagline is? You're going to get 20 results, because everyone's going to have more than one answer. And then you're going to have to sift through 20 results to find the perfect one, and that could be much more trouble than necessary. So for all of this stuff, all of this marketing stuff, I would say advice, marketing advice, only include the decision makers. So I've got Victor's Bakery, and I founded it and with my friend, and then we've got three chefs in the kitchen. Am I going to ask all five of those people for an opinion? It's probably going to be myself and the other person, the other founder, the other one investing. I think probably my chefs are very creative and such, but they're not the decision makers. They're really good in the kitchen. I'm not. That's why I hired them. But I'm going to, as well as my partner, be the one making the decisions for any of this marketing stuff. So only include the decision maker or makers. And I see this all the time. I, uh, my company was just in a meeting uh, with a biotech company in La Jolla, and we landed the client. And so uh, it's starting to get to the point, okay, let's start to put your branding together, make a website and such. Let's have a meeting. They wanted to have a meeting. Uh, and then we saw on the email chain there at the top on the CC, they had CC'd like six people. Not all those six people were going to be in that meeting to make this decision. So we contacted just the, the main con our main contact person and said, okay, we're going to have this meeting. Who are the people in the meeting and are they decision makers? And two ended up being there, not all six, because those other four, they didn't have a real reason to be there, especially if they were going to get, give decisions that perhaps weren't going in the best route. So always include the decision makers' priority. Tagline. So any questions on the tagline concept? Most of the stuff that's in this document is also going to relate to, for example, your about page on your website or your bio on your various social networks. So I will say here, 
the company profile info is basically in the service for about page or biography and, and such. So all of this stuff is not just an exercise, mind exercise. It also has the purpose in that when you create yet another social network, when yet another social network comes out that, um, that you need to get on, you have to usually write biography about yourself or your company, you know, about information when you get into these networks. So all of this stuff in this document and the other document I'll give later is also in service for that, to have uh, the Bible of what your, what your company is about. That's one of the terms you might hear regarding this and other such things. This is the Bible of your company. This is everything, the alpha and the omega about your company, about the slogan, the founding, values, all of that stuff that we'll look at. So this document and another one should be the one that you constantly refer to when you are going to create a new profile, set up a page, when you're going to make these tweets, when you're going to um, get on Facebook. It all goes back to this original, these original documents. So there's a spot here for About Us. This is about your company or your foundation or yourself. Remember, all of this that we talk about relates to all of this SEO stuff that we talk about relates to a company, but it relates to, let's say, I am an artist, but I simply want to make the world a better place by showing off my paintings. Great, SEO still works for you because you still want to, as we'll see later, talk about values and target audiences and all of that stuff. And the about page might be very valuable for you as the artist because yet another watercolor painter? Well, what's so special about your watercolor paintings? Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in this business? How will you make the company a success? And these answers will help you fill your biography on various sites. Do you notice these are the classic who, what, when, where, why, how? The classic, classic questions of journalism. Um, if you're able to answer as many of these as possible, you're putting together a great picture about your company, who founded it. And um, that's, that could be an interesting story in and of itself. There, you go ahead and write that. Any of these things could be content that you use when you get to the point of social media. Social media is a valuable thing about SEO. Being on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Snapchat, on Peach, YouTube, whatever, all of the hundreds, and there are lots and lots of social networks, being on any of the social networks is also a way to help your SEO rankings because you are creating content that the search engines can find. We'll talk about S uh, social a little bit deeper, but uh, Fridays I teach my social media class, and I don't think I've seen everyone there, so you guys are missing out. Friday mornings, 9.15 a.m. This Friday, we're talking about Facebook, the biggest social network in the world. Now, unfortunately, the class is full, so if you would like a seat in it, you do have to come early. And if there's an empty seat, I give seats away. It's first come, first serve. But if the seats are full, then you can try again next time. Part two of the class will be offered next Friday, and you don't need to have taken part one to take part two. Next month is part two, and we're starting to talk in there about um, Instagram. No, it's LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube in that order. Next month, Fridays. And so this uh, About Us information is content that I could use when I'm tweeting. You know, uh, it's a tradition every Thursday on Twitter to post a TBT. Does anyone know what TBT is? Throwback Thursday. Hashtag TBT. And that's simply a tradition that people like to engage in, and that every Thursday they post something that's a throwback, that's, remember this, remember that? thing that passed. People do that with, you know, on a personal account where I tweet a picture of myself when I was 10 years old. Hashtag TBT. And then a lot of people do that. Companies get into that too. For example, McDonald's might post something on Twitter that says TBT 1958 and shows the McDonald's logo in 1958. It's not always about buy this 
subscribe to that order now on social media it's also the fun frivolous uh, you know uh, the other side of the social media coin there's the business side and there's the fun side the personal side and it would behoove you to think of both so having content like this to share on Thursday um, and it doesn't even matter what day because there's also um, uh, WBW, which is way back Wednesday. <laughs> so basically any day you can write something interesting. But there are these trends that happen throughout social media. Um, that, it, that if you want to reach an audience on social media, it does behoove you to get educated about. So all that about info, the better you fill it in, the more it can help you on your website and outside your website. Any questions about, about us? Question. There's a mission statement here also that is uh, valuable to think about. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. There are many concepts to talk about regarding marketing, and I break them off into different pieces here and in other documents as well. This one's very dense because the mission statement uh, this is to try to answer the question, what's in it for them? Or from the point of view for the, of the customer, what's in it for me? Okay, you're yet another nonprofit organization. I'm already donating to this and that and this and that. Why would I also donate to you? Oh, you are all about saving X. I believe in that. Let me donate to you. So your mission statement, what are you trying to accomplish right now what is your business about your organization mission statement for myself as a uh, as a photographer uh, to show uh, my personal touch uh, with my view of black and white photography you know what am I trying to accomplish with my photos I'm trying to show off my photography in short but in a more artistic way the mission statement is trying to explain to potential people why are my black and white photos more interesting than the rest so I could say you know uh, to to show the world my put my perspective through of black and white photography as a uh, you know as as a migrant to the United States you know whatever makes me stand out from from the rest of the millions of photographers out there mission statement and you can get a lot of inspiration from real companies for this let's take a little side tour here go ahead and open up your web browser when you open your web browser what should pop up is is our is the college's website the college has a mission statement you might not have ever noticed it, but it's right at the bottom of the document. Mission. It might not be literally called mission statements, but mission. The mission of San Diego Continuing Education. To provide ongoing learning opportunities, preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enriched lives through good health and personal fulfillment. So a very matter-of-fact mission statement would be to give, a, to give free classes. Okay, that's fine. The end. That's the mission statement of the college. But notice here, it strives for a little bit more artistry, a little bit more prose, a little bit above just facts. Um, it's got these keywords. Learning opportunities, career advancement, college education, good health. It's got these keywords. Part of the concept of the long tail keyword strategy that we talked about last time. When someone is searching online, free college classes. There's that keyword college, they might have searched for, you know, local San Diego, free local San Diego learning opportunities. Okay, learning opportunities. Uh, affordable classes on good health. Those are those keywords that people could be searching for and could be appearing. So everything that you're doing here regarding this document is still about all of this SEO, creating the content 
to be found by the search engines, by Google, by Bing, Yahoo, Ask.com, AltaVista, AOL Search, whatever people search, use to search with. You're creating content that is hopefully found by people because people are getting more specific in their keywords. So if this was just all about putting free classes, free classes, free classes, people are searching for more keywords than just free classes, aren't they? Alumni connections and so forth. So the point here is look at the college's mission statement. Look at any other company. This one's got read more. If you read more, it goes on to detailed vision statement, philosophy statement, core values, mission statement, abstracted, and mission statement comprehensive. Did you know that this series, that this, uh, this, this college, San Diego, San Diego College, City College, is a hundred years old. It's uh, been around a long time, and all of these keywords within this statement. Now, you may never visit this about page like this, but it's full of these keywords that people might be searching for. And if it gets traffic to the site, this is a great page. It's got the content that people are looking for, and it's real content, not just a screen full of keywords. It's real sentences with real meaning that the search engines can find and people can find. Now, again, as I said, many companies out there uh, have a form of this, and so let's say we wanted to look at some other company. Just off the top of my head, I want to look at McDonald's. A lot of times with a big company, this sort of information is going to be found under the investor relations. Because when you're a big company like this and you've got investors, investors need to know everything about your, your company to uh, make good financial decisions. So I'm on McDonald's, and I'm going to, if I can't find it right away, I'll move on, but I'm just going to kind of explore around somewhere to see if I can find information about, you know, mission statement and such for McDonald's. I'm guessing perhaps it can be under our story. There's our history, people, leadership, communities, values, corporate info. Values in action. Where was that at? Values in action? Maybe. Let me see here. Our ambition. So it may not be named exactly mission statement always, but it's all related to this stuff here. Let's say just a completely another one over here. Let's go Annie's Homegrown. Notice the slogan for Annie's. Choose good. So that has a meaning there. And Annie's Homegrown. I thought they used to be called Annie's Organics, but I guess now they're Annie's Homegrown. So, okay, Annie's homegrown. By itself, homegrown. I'm getting these connotations about, you know, organic stuff and sustainable or whatever. And then I've got this slogan, this tagline, choose good. Again, that could be applied to anything. That could be applied to a tax preparer. Uh, but then coupled with the main name and, and the various other aspects of the site, then it makes more sense. Here we go, right at the top, our mission about our practices, our food, giving back. We believe in goodness. Our mission, to cultivate a healthier and happier world by spreading goodness through nourishing foods, honest words, and conduct that is considerate and forever kind to the planet. So the point of all of this stuff is these are keywords that people could search for. You know, healthier, nourishing foods, honest. These are just keywords that people could search for, yes. But this is also to create an entity online so that your target audience can find you. 
And later on, we have another um, sheet about target audience. Uh, that's something to explore later, but the point of this is to just visit any of the websites that you like, any of the companies or nonprofits or anything, basically, and poke around on their website and see if you can find some mission statement info that could inspire you to uh, for your own. Any questions on the mission statement? I've got a section here on values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, etc. And then there's a list. If you control click the list, it should open up in the web browser. Oh man, it's not there anymore. Well, there is a list here of values. I suppose what we could do, list of corporate values. Core value list with 500 examples. So I haven't looked at any of these yet, but unfortunately I should have checked it, but the link that I have in my document doesn't seem to work. But obviously, then you can search around a little bit. Devotion, insightful, justice, liberty, balance, beauty. These are just keywords that define your company. So uh, the importance of core values is that you use them to find your target audience. The importance of having this list of core values, things that your company believes in, is for you to find your target audience because, uh, as we'll see later, I um, let's say I want to get my the people that I'm trying to sell my product to believe in you know uh, integrity loyalty family values and such so does my company therefore my company is better for you to buy from than the competitor the competitor might not have any values stated or might have values that run counter to mine so these companies you know the all of these companies uh, Chipotle, um, McDonald's, Nike, etc. All of these companies have this, these things. They might not be very obvious that you can look at that list of things, but if you've worked at um, any 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 company, probably in the back, you know, away from the people, but for the employees, there is this list of core values. I was over at. Um, I was over at Gonzales um, uh, Mexican um, grocery store, uh, huge grocery store with a lot of uh, Mexican food, and they have an area that has, uh, you know, pre-made or you know, home-cooked meals that you can eat right there, a little cafeteria area. And I peeked over the counter, and on the back they had a poster there that says Gonzales believes in this, and it had a list of like ten things. And those are the things that, if you want to work there, you should believe in those things too, because you should believe in customer service and should believe in, you know, um, doing the right job and whatever the list was. I don't remember, but you you get that a lot if you work for a company. These are the values of our company. You should follow these values to do well in the company, because yeah, a job is a job, but this might be your career. You know, all of this corporate speak, but basically for your own company these are valuable because we will see how these will help us find our target audience an audience that cares about to buy your product rather than the competition uh, these core values also help to humanize your company because there are so many choices so many people in the world 
and everyone's got a choice and everyone's choice can be catered to, that means you're at a disadvantage that you cannot just fly under the radar and be yet another realty company. What are the values of your realty company that really sets you apart from the competition down the street? And um, perhaps would I want to hire uh, someone over at Century 21 or Macmillan Realty or John's Realty? You know, I have those three big choices. Two are two big companies. One is a smaller company. Maybe I want to hire the big company because they're big, they've got experience. But because they're so big that I might not be able to get the customer service, I'm yet another number on their docket of houses to sell. If I go with John's Realty, they're going to put really a lot of effort into my own unique situation because they're a smaller company and we have the same values. Growing up in Southern California, we love the weather here and so forth, and I'll sell your house. So to further personify, personify your company, humanize your company, we've got this next thing to think about, personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So if you look at the Twitter accounts or the Facebook accounts or the Instagram accounts of all of these big companies or even your competitors perhaps on different levels, you have to see how are they communicating? What is the personality? I wouldn't quite be very happy if my CPA over on Facebook and such is tweeting very informal or posting very informal things and very fun things and very childish things. For my CPA, I want my money to be handled very seriously. And what I'm getting out of their social media is that they're not serious on social media. I don't know if that translates to them not being serious with my money. I don't want to chance it. There's plenty of other CPAs out there. On the other hand, I don't want a stoic, um, rigid corporate face for the daycare where I'm sending my kids. I want a nice, friendly, childish, child-friendly type of communication from that childcare company. Um, and if they seem really strict and stoic and mean online, are they doing that also with the kids in the daycare? So the voice, the personality of your company should show through, it should be something that is defined and that you adhere to when you're on Twitter, when you write on your Facebook. Even as basic things as, are you going to use contractions? Are you going to use contractions? Are you going to use contractions? When you write on your website, on your blog, on your Twitter, all of these little things could be conscious or subconscious that customers and clients pick up on. Yes? I'm speaking of like the formality or informality of your personality. Mm -hmm. um, on our website, we're a little bit more formal, whereas on the blog, we're a lot more informal. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And is that common to do that? It is, it is common, and, and I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer, but it's something for you to be aware of. Why is it so serious, perhaps, or different on one and not the, and the other? If you are trying to put across a, a this personality of, of your company in, totali in its totality, part of that totality does not jibe. If you've, got, if you've been blogging for a while, and let's say you've got already a thousand words in all of your blogs, and your main website you know, is a hundred words, those 100 words don't quite jibe with the 1,000 you've written on your blog, or perhaps vice versa. So you should think about that they all, that they all gel, that they all are related. The same sort of terminology, the same sort of voice. And so where I give examples, notice I also throw in f uh, flowery language here and there. It's a little more evident over here. Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design and such. Um, because this is a this is all this exercise here is about marketing. Marketing, another word for that is advertising. I'm trying to advertise. I'm trying to market something. Um, marketing has a whole. Um, 
face of it that it is trying to convince you of something and I hate to say it but a lot of a, a lot about what marketing is you know is trying to make you feel bad it's trying to tell you what's wrong with you but how we can fix it if you buy our product if you hire our company if you do things this way you know our product think about uh, you know all of these hair care products or personal hygiene products they're all basically telling you you're ugly and you stink but here's how to fix it <laughs> buy this product um, you know all of these things like uh, even if you break it down to the deepest levels uh, you know those Nike shoes that just do it it's like okay, get off get off the couch tubby get into these shoes and you're gonna lose weight all of these companies you know like it or hate it to some degree are all trying to tell you there's a problem here's our solution and so if you know that you can use that to your advantage hopefully in a positive way hopefully what I'm showing you here you use it for your, for positivity and that's why I'm saying about values and personality in that how are you writing what sort of language what sort of adjectives and such I always give the example love them or hate them Apple is one of the most valuable companies in the world in the history of humanity Apple and Google have made so much money, have such a reach, have such a mind share, have such fame. And again, love them or hate them, uh, Apple, um, they don't have the largest market share. Literally, they do not sell the most phones. Android phones have the larger market share. It's like 70% market share. 70% of people have an Android. But you wouldn't quite know that from Apple this and Siri that and, and Apple this and Apple that because they've got such a great marketing arm. You don't see a lot of Google ads and Google marketing on TV and such. You see Apple ads on TV and on print and on the web. And Google ads and such, I think, very rare. Think about the last time you saw an ad for Google on TV. Now, I'm saying literally Google, because Google also, since, they, since they're behind Android, and Android can be used by any company, it's very diluted. App, only Apple makes iPhones, but Samsung makes Android phones, HTC makes Android phones, LG makes Android phones, Google makes Android phones, lots of companies make Android phones, and the biggest name behind the brand new hot Android phone that came out is not Google, it's Samsung usually. So think about how Apple, their products, they've got a brand new iPhone, and on their commercials, if you pay attention, they're not really telling you, look at how great this new iPhone is, look at these megapixels and everything. No, they're showing, look at this happy family enjoying the fireworks. It's a good thing they captured that moment on their iPhone. Look at this, uh, these kids uh, doing their homework with their dad across the world through their iMac, uh, through their iPad. On, a, on an Apple product. They're not saying, look at all of this retina display pixels on the device. No, it's a happy family connected. So these companies that do it really well, and Apple does it really well, they're a highly profitable, uh, very famous global brand. And um, you might have heard recently on the news and such that, well, Apple stock isn't doing as well as it's usually doing. Yeah, it's only worth about, you know, 300 billion instead of 320 billion. <laughs> So, even Samsung, um, they're also about that. We've got a brand new phone, and they, they kind of hype the, the details of their technology a little bit more. Uh, look at this, brand new megapixels, and look at this low-light low camera feature and such. Uh, and to some degree, they also talk about the happy people using their phones, and you can be happy too if you buy our $600 phone. All of these companies are going to convince you of something. You're going to have a great family reunion next time when you buy this iPad. So that's marketing that's trying to reach an audience with its by showing a personality and values following a mission statement marketing and then the last thing here is fundamentals list the company address website email contact address and any social media profiles that already exist you may also list social media profiles you would like to set up in the future so this is where I would write, you know, my company address and email and all of that. And I'll give some advice here regarding that. Because some of us have home businesses. 
I'm not going to put my home address out on the web for any crazy person to find it. So instead of using your home address, get a PO box. Um, I think it's like uh, eighty dollars a year. You know, one of these things that's the cost of doing business. And if you've got your own home business and you're doing your taxes, probably that is in a, that is a deductible expense. It's part of your business. Get that PO box and you write that off on your taxes. I'm not a tax expert at all, so check with yours. Uh, but I know that I do that, and it works. And so um, instead of being, you know, one, two, three Main Avenue where my real house is at, I'm going to put a P.O. box. Some people might say, well, that looks shady, doesn't it? Can't anyone buy a P.O. box and create any business, any fly-by-night business? Yes, but um, I think it's it's global now or, you know, universal. But uh, I think now the post office lets you put their physical location in the address to be more legitimate. So if my P.O. box is whatever, you know, P.O. box, P.O. Box, whatever, Chula Vista, California 91914. Okay, that looks, uh, that looks like any, you know, any scam artist with a P.O. Box. But I know my post office, what they've got is you can do 830 Coon Drive, number 223, etc., Chula Vista, California. That looks much more like a real legitimate address. And I want to put mine right here. There's realty. Okay, there's my corporate offices. So you don't have to use your home address. You can use a PO box. I don't know if, for example, mailboxes, etc., will let you do that. Some of these other PO box type companies. I know the plain old post office, the U.S. Post Office, does that in my area. I think all of them do this now. Check with yours. Because the spammers don't have this. The cheapcanadianmeds.coms of the world don't have this. They don't have real contact information. They have a product, you buy it, and they can easily take your credit card. But then there's no way to get in contact, get returns, deal with customer service. The search engines look at all of this stuff. And after 20, uh, 27 years of, of websites, the search engines have to be smarter to, to help prevent all of this spam. All these terrible websites that you visit the website, you get all of these pop-ups, these websites that can, you know, hijack your computer and hold you for ransom. Have you heard about this latest trend about you download the wrong thing or you go to the wrong website and suddenly your computer's held for ransom? And you have to pay a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to some scammer in Latvia to get your your computer back. That happened to someone that I know, it, and they're so insidious now because this person, uh, she was on her on her laptop. She went to the wrong website because she wanted to get the latest free videos and the latest free musics, uh, I mean vi uh, movies. And then suddenly, what the website would did was took a picture of her, and on the website it says, "You have been the the FBI has been alerted to you stealing movies. Pay two hundred dollars to for the FBI to fix this." She called me up so scared and I said, what's going on here? They have my picture they, and they know that I'm stealing movies. What am I going to do? Well, it was a virus. There was no FBI involved, of course, but it seems so real and so scary when your picture's right there because it, it tapped into her camera on her laptop and put her picture right there on the site. So you want to be as legitimate as possible. You want to have contact information. You want to have a way for people to trust you because didn't I say last week the three pillars of SEO there was longevity anyone remember the second one authority and content you're not going to help your authority if you don't have any way to get for people to get in contact with you some people want to send a letter Less and less of them, of course, but some people do. To show authority and legitimacy, here's, an, here's, a, here's a real life address where someone can send me a letter. In addition to your email and such. So re regarding advice on email, um, I would recommend something like 
you know, um, contact at Victor's Realty dot biz, not Victor's. I'll say yes. I'll say no. Not Victor's Realty at gmail.com. Don't get one of these free email addresses that any spammer can get. I believe you, you're not a spammer. The search engines won't. A potential person that is trying to get a hold of you won't. Victor's Realty at gmail.com, spammer. Contact at Victor's Realty is legit. The reason for this is because the Gmails and the Hotmails and the Coxmails and all of those ones are free. And if they're free, that means any spammer can create one or a thousand of them. And the one with your domain name is not free. It's a modest fee. It really ranges depending on, your, on the company you go with. Because usually when you buy your domain, victorsrealty.biz, it comes with an email address or maybe an extra nominal fee. Usually you're going to be buying yearly your domain name and your hosting and your email. And that is a huge range of price. It can be from $20 to $120 a year. That's not so bad for the cost of doing business. And again, you can write that off on your taxes if you itemize and you do it properly as a business. So every year you're paying for your website and such, that can go on your tax, business write-off, the business expense. And then here, for building your authority, I don't trust too much whatever business at hotmail.com, because anyone can do that. I trust more the other one. And you may not have thought about it, but thousands, and if not hundreds of thousands, and millions of people do think about that, and do pay attention to it. And the search engines do too. So there might be reason enough. I also have here phone. Instead of your home phone or cell phone, get a Google Voice number. Google, you can look this up on your own. Uh, it needs some setup, but Google, uh, you can get a phone number from Google for free. The catch is that it's tied to a real phone number. So I have a real phone number on my cell phone. I go to the website, I believe it's uh, voice.google.com. If not, you can look it up. But you go to voice.google.com, you, you sign up. I've already got a Gmail, so I'm halfway there. I have an account. I go there, I then uh, claim a phone number, and then it attaches itself to my cell phone. Well, what's the point of that? Why don't I just give my cell phone number? Well, if I get a Google Voice number, I can put that phone number on my business cards or on my website or whatever, and I can set it up so that when someone calls that number, it goes directly to voicemail. It goes to a voicemail that I wrote that says, thank you for calling Victor's Realty. We will get back to you within 30 minutes. You know, have people go to that voicemail number, then you can screen it and call them back. It's some spammer that called you. Well, on your Google Voice, you can log in and, and mark it as a spammer, and that number will never call you again. Someone leaves a voicemail, Google Voice will send you an email with it transcribed, so you can read it. Google Voice is free, and it's been around a few years. So unfortunately, perhaps the perfect phone number that you want might not be available. You can get local numbers. You, get, you can get 619 or 858 area code phone numbers. And because it's been around a while, what I mean about your perfect number is, you know how you might have 888-LAWYER, uh, which is actually, you know, 527, whatever. You can get something like that from Google Voice, possibly. But because it's been around a while, that number combination might have been taken. 
What's another cool thing about this is once you set it up with one number, then you can set it up with multiple phones. So let's say I set it up with my cell phone that I always have with me and my home phone. Those two phones are tied to the one Google Voice. So if someone calls a Google Voice number, my home phone rings and my cell phone rings. So if I'm at home, I can answer the home phone, or if I'm on the road, I can answer my cell phone. So all this contact information, someone may want to contact you. The search engines see that you do have contact methods, unlike spammers, and so that's beneficial for you. And the last thing, and then we'll take a break, uh, social media. What I would say about social media is claim your name on social media as soon as possible. So you may not have any plans to use Twitter. You should still go off to Twitter and claim your name. You might have not have any plans to use Instagram or Vine or whatever. Go claim your name in case you want to one day. Perhaps there is another Victor's Bakery on the other side of the country. And they claimed it and they use it. You can't take it from them. Your company may have existed 20 years and theirs may have existed 2 years. But they got the name first. You cannot take the name even if they're not using it, unfortunately. These companies, these social media companies need to get their acts together about letting people use the addresses, the profiles, legitimately. As in, there's so many of these dead profiles that someone created three years ago and they are not using it anymore because they lost their password or don't care anymore and I want that name and I cannot get it. These companies, Twitter, Facebook, all of these are not, they've really dropped the ball with this. They really need to free up those names that are like dead, that haven't been used in a year. Because a legitimate company, I'm sure, would want it. And so, claim your name as soon as possible, or you might end up as at the underscore real underscore Victor's Bakery. Instead of Victor's Bakery. Because Victor's Bakery was taken. And so was the Victor's Bakery. And so was real Victor's Bakery. So I have to do the underscore real underscore Victor's Bakery. And if I don't hurry, that one's taken and I'll have to be that. And the problem with that is that uh, unless you specify to people exactly the name of your profile and such, then they're going to go to the wrong one. They're going to go to your competitor and they're going to see, well, what, where are you? I just went to your website and followed you, but you're posting weird stuff. <laughs> So that happened a few years ago when Netflix was going, when Netflix was much more about the, about the DVD mailing business, and then this newfangled streaming business started to really take hold, Netflix made the brilliant decision to break their company into two companies. One was going to be the DVD company, and one was going to be the streaming company. They were going to call, I forget which one, but one of them was going to be called Flickster, and the other one Netflix. And that went over terribly because then now two different companies, people were confused, do I need two logins? They were going to change the price, one was going to be more expensive, people hated that. And then they were so short-sighted that Netflix never thought about going to Flickr and seeing if Flickster was available. It wasn't available. It was taken by a pot-smoking teenager that was writing crazy things every day and got even more crazy and famous once this news hit. Suddenly got 10,000 followers. Wrong company. I think it was just Flickster like that. And so that was a really funny couple of days on Twitter. I remember so many people following him and he had so much fame suddenly and they were saying, are you gonna sell your name to Twitter? You're gonna be a millionaire. Don't be sure, don't, don't sell it for at least a million dollars. Dude, you're gonna be famous. Nothing happened of it. And and Flickr went back on the whole plan and it never happened. Uh, so, very short-sighted. They hadn't claimed their, their name. If it happens to a big multi-billion dollar company like, like uh, Netflix, it can happen to you too. The question then is always, well, which name should I claim? You've mentioned so many names already. At the very least, Facebook 
Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Pinterest. Hey, wait a minute, I teach those classes. I teach those things, don't I? Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Pinterest. I would also say, depending on your brand and such, I think also another very good one to, to get in on is Instagram. It's got actually more people using it than Twitter. Twitter has about 320 million users. Instagram has about 400 million users. Pinterest, I'm not sure at the moment, but probably around 200 million. Google Plus, they don't give official values, but somewhere between 200 and 400 million. And Facebook at about 1.5 billion users. And the population of the world is about 6 billion. So lots and lots and lots of people use Facebook. With so many hundreds of millions of people using these profiles, hopefully yours is not taken yet. I didn't mention LinkedIn, that might be valuable to you. I didn't mention YouTube, that might be valuable to you. Honestly, these are all valuable. There's hundreds of millions of people using these. And yes, it's even more work for you to do because you've got to run your business and payroll and blog and social media, six of them? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Uh, that's why people hire social media marketing companies. That's why someone gets drafted to also write the Twitter. You're in the kitchen, but you're also on Twitter duty this week. So it is valuable to use these because people are on these networks all day long, and they're getting larger. Over on Wikipedia, list of social networking websites. So obviously not everyone, not all of these matter for everyone. Global, Alexa, page rank, registration, registered users, date launched. Let's see here under registered users. I'm going to put this in order. 1.6. Well, Google Plus claims 1.6 billion, although it has a footnote. The thing about Google Plus is because Google Plus is integrated with Gmail and YouTube and Google Search, basically Google counts that if anyone's created a Gmail, you automatically have a Google Plus. So that's why they can say that they're the largest one because they're 1.6. Now, I full disclosure, I love Google+. Plus. I use it all the time. I have a lot of fun on it. But I doubt that that's a real number there. Uh, Facebook, full disclosure, I hate Facebook. I don't use Facebook personally, but I love it for business. And this might be an outdated value because I thought they were at 1.5 already, but they've had 1.2. And we've got Twitter. Okay, okay, I see. These are registered users. I usually think about active user base. That's a different thing. Twitter has 645 million registered users, but they, on the latest, because I follow this stuff financially, on the latest um, financial news, they said they had about 320 million active users. So, Qzone, which I've never heard about, it's Chinese, it has 480, <coughs> 480 um, registered and sign a Weibo, that's like the Chinese Twitter. Instagram right there. This is updated because I know they said they had 400 million recently. Hubble, VK, that one's Russian. Tumblr, LinkedIn, 200. Yeah, this needs to be updated, but it looks like this is a per this particular article on Wikipedia is locked, so no one can update it or protect it. So anyway, there's lots of them here. Which one do I deal with? Um, You could also look at it under the terms of page rank. Alexa is a is a website that uh, ranks the popularity of sites. So, for example, the number two most visited site in the world, Facebook. We've got Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, Pinterest, etc. Oh, 
look at this. I just saw something interesting here. Cucumber Town, a network for cooks. So if you are a cook or a chef, you might want to get on that social network. Doesn't say how many are in it, but even if even if you get a few dozen followers off of that network, that might help your, your business. Yeah, this, this thing's out of date. It doesn't even mention Peach, the latest social network. So on that document, what you want to do is Um, and you want to at least claim these names so that no one else gets them. Worst case scenario, someone takes that name and then uses it against you. Now that's an extreme worst case scenario. That doesn't really happen to m most of us. But if you wanted that name eventually over on, on, on Diaspora and someone took it, then someone took it. You can't take it back. Any questions on this document then? All right, let's take our first break. It's 1.50. We'll be back at 2 o'clock. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like, if you'd like to print.